Hey there YouTube. Today I'm replacing my kitchen sink with this Kohler unit that I got from Costco. I'll put the item number right here. There's the part number for the sink itself. And the part number for the sink is 1420840-VS. Just the FYI, if you don't like this faucet, I see people selling them on eBay new for like a hundred bucks. So you could always sell it and get a different one if you don't like it. I bought this sink a year ago and I still haven't installed it because, well, of sheer fear. Let me show you. There we go, just so you can see. My mantra was, don't touch it. I'm gonna replace all this plumbing and get the sink installed. Ah, that's much better. An actual pea trap with pecs. No more corrosion. <laughs> Here's the sink. It doesn't seem to be fitting in the same hole. Oh, wait. It's close. I might have to cut this hole just a little bit. Oh my god, it was the plastic. The plastic was forming a triangle. And that little bit of extra thickness on the plastic wouldn't let it sit in there. Wow. I am... I never would have thought that. Ah, ah the plastic screws me again. I still gotta caulk it. Get it. Wow, that is much better. Oh my God, that is so cool. All right, so I was worried about the deck flexing. So I cut a, a 10 inch by two and three quarter half inch piece of plywood, like the instruction said, and I'm just gonna put it right there and that'll stiffen it up. And of course I'm gonna put the faucet on before I put the sink in. You can't use a socket on this because it hits. There we go. Well, I was actually flexing a little bit even with the plywood, so. Yeah. Couldn't imagine how much it would flex without the plywood. All right, they don't include it in the instructions, but you do need plumber's putty. Um, for the strainer. I thought it might use some fancy new rubber technology, but it doesn't. Good old plumber's putty. Put the plumber's putty on, put it through the sink, then your rubber washer, your paper washer, and then your metal washer. Okay, so the worst part about this entire install is these stupid clips. Um, so they, this side goes in the track on the sink, and then there is, if you can look very closely, very closely, there's a flathead screw. I mean, compared to the size of my finger, look at that tiny, tiny, tiny screw. If they had made that like an 8mm or a 5mm socket, this would have taken a lot less time. I've been at this, trying to put these clips on for the better part of an hour. So, sorry about the light. Start in the back, and then put it in the little slot. And then when it's in this slot, instead of rotating it next to the sink, like it says to, rotate it, and then slide it. Oh wait, hang on. Uh, camera's in my way. Okay, so rotate it, and then hold it in its track, and slide it slide it along the track and get it up to the front instead of trying to do it up here so just to show you how small that screw head is here's a normal size screwdriver and 
Now imagine trying to get that on there over here while the clip is moving as you try to screw it. So you have to hold one hand onto this and then screw this in. It's very uncomfortable. All right, like eight hours later, it's done. Um, the reason it took so long is because I had to replumb, but I'd say the worst part about this install is the little clips that held on the sink basin. Uh, those really, really sucked. Um, so far though, I am loving, I'm absolutely in love with this sink. Um, we used to have a double basin and um, some people go the other way and go from one to two, you know. Um, but we have a dishwasher so we don't really store dishes in one side. It, and I think, I think this will keep us honest instead of putting dishes in here and knowing that we're filling our sink with dishes, we'll actually put them right in the dishwasher. Um, there's so much space in here, we're actually storing the soaps, and that keeps the top clean. So, yeah, uh, that's the install. Let me just do a quick feature overview, I guess. Um, hot water is straight back. Cold water is up. And then it's a mixer valve, so anywhere in between gets too warm. Um, there's a magnetic hook here and then there is also a turbo button that increases the flow and then that turbo button resets when you turn off the faucet and of course you got your sprayer versus faucet there and this is nice you can you know wash things inside the sink and then I was worried about this window getting smashed but I don't think it's going to spring that far. Like, yeah. That's worst case scenario, let's see. So you'd have to be out here, I think. Let's see. Uh, maybe I should put a board up there and test it. Luckily, I had a board handy. It actually comes with this cutting board. And that's another thing that kind of just fits right there. Doesn't hit the faucet, it sits nice and flush. Okay, let's see if we can hit the window with the faucet. Let's see if we move this. Far corner of the sink. Far side of the sink here. Eh, it's batting this around, but it's not hitting the window, so. So, I've only had it a few hours, but I'm already noticing that when you turn it on, either the sprayer or the normal faucet, uh, little water droplets accumulate up here. I'll show you. So that might be an issue down the line with little water spots because our water is kind of crusty, um, but we'll see. I'll do a maybe a six month review after we've used this for a while. We have our electric skillet that we make pancakes on. Fits right in there. Amazing, super, super nice. So, yeah, hope this video helped. Uh, I'm sad that I waited a year to install this, but you saw what those pipes looked like. So, um, but I'm very, very happy with it. Thanks for watching.